Earlier today, our Nine Wants to Know team revealed that the National Park Service has opened an investigation to the 1958 death of Bobby Bizza. He's the 10 year old who vanished from a Catholic summer camp near Allen's Park, a case that our investigator Kevin Vaughn has been reporting on all week. Here's the final installment of Kevin's series raising new questions about what happened. Gazing up at the east face of Mount Meeker, Larry Collins can point to the place. Yep, right up that drainage at about 11,000 feet. The place where he helped recover Bobby Bizzop's remains in 1959, a year after the 10-year-old deaf boy vanished from the Catholic Church's Camp St. Malo. The location is clearly visible even from several miles away, right along Cabin Creek, where trees give way to rock. We strung it all off with strings. A 35-year seasonal worker at Rocky Mountain National Park. And then we ran strings across. Collins led the recovery crew. Then we would search back and forth between the strings. But now it's that location that calls into question the original story of Bobby Bizzop's disappearance and death, that he wandered away from the camp and got lost. Nobody quite knew what happened. Harriet Dudich was Bobby's cousin. We just thought that since he was, he couldn't speak, and he couldn't hear that he got lost in the woods. In your experience, would you see somebody get lost that would go up, 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 up like that? No, and as you look up at that mountain, he could look back and see the camp. He could always tell where he was. Well, I doubt seriously that he was lost. The whole location, the setting, and everything. An opinion see. shared by Roger Conter. He wanted out and he wanted to stay out. A high-ranking ranger also on the recovery effort. It wasn't a a pleasure trip at all, no. It's not the only thing raising new suspicions about the mysterious case of Bobby Bizzop, a case never investigated as a possible crime. It was this man, Neil Hewitt, who led us to begin looking into Bobby Bizzop's death. He was a counselor at the camp when Bobby vanished and the one who discovered his remains. And he molested at least eight boys while ordained as a Catholic I, I, priest. I, I did do things that were wrong, I realize that. I've been around a long time. Facts that bother Richard Heaster, who was at Camp St. Malo with Bobby Bizzop the day he disappeared, and is the nephew of the priest who ran the camp back then. And I now am, you know, familiar with church history and what has taken place, and um, so there's little, I hate to say, that would surprise me. Bobby had fun at camp. His parents sent him five times and shared a letter with reporters he wrote the day before he vanished. I caught a chipmunk. It's missing. Love, Bobby. Good luck and lots of kisses, making it clear the boy was happy at Camp St. Malo. But it's equally clear that something upset him or scared him before he pushed his way through a group of boys yelling unintelligibly and ran off. I remember, I think I remember asking, well, who is that and what was that about? And somebody saying that was the, that deaf kid. No, I think that that was immediately before he disappeared. What we don't know is what happened that left Bobby so upset. Was he upset? Was he angry? Was he uh, embarrassed? Was he hurt? And the answer is all of the above. Camp staff relayed to the search crews how upset Bobby was that day. I was struck by the, I'd say, unanimity of all the people we talked to. So he was a very upset and troubled person. There's no proof of anything, but there's a lot of reason to be suspicious of things. We asked Rich Orman, a criminal prosecutor in Colorado for more than 20 years, to look at what we'd found. He was bothered by Neil Hewitt's interactions with Bobby. He was concerned that Hewitt was among the last to see the boy and the one who discovered his remains. But he was troubled by one thing more than anything else. Neil Hewitt discovered Bobby's remains on July 3, 1959, a Friday. But Father Richard Heaster, the camp director, didn't report it to authorities until the following Monday, July 6th. You have this delay of report. A three-day delay. Combined with a, a large organization with a history of, of some members abusing children and the organization attempting to cover it up. You can't look at that delay and think that there wasn't a reason for it. It just doesn't happen on its own. And the reason for that delay, I'm not saying it's incriminating, per se, but it's extremely suspicious. Bobby Bizzop's parents never blamed the camp for what happened, saying their boy loved the place. The counselors were wonderful and no one was negligent. They went to their graves believing they'd lost their only child in a tragic accident. Nobody ever knew really, and we still don't know, what exactly happened to Bobby. To me, the, the evidence is that something happened to this boy, that he ran away, ran up into the mountains, 
and some, something happened to him. I hope the truth does come out, whatever it is. I would be very interested in seeing that justice is done and conducting a fresh investigation as a cold case. I hope that they find, you know, whatever happened so the truth can be told and the mystery of Bobby solved for once and for all. That was Kevin Vaughn reporting. Bobby's cousin told us today she's happy about the official investigation and optimistic they'll get answers. There's so much more collected on this story, including the Park Service's original report on Bobby's disappearance at 9news.com.